there, bombers. It's Boss Bomb Maud here for Book Club because, frankly, I don't think enough people read. So what I'm going to do, I tell you some of my favourite fantasy books. Maybe you will read them. Maybe you have read them. Maybe you'll ignore me. Who knows? But Book Club is all about sharing what we love. So here goes. For me, a must-read is Ready Player One. This one on Goodreads has scored 4.3 out of 5, and I think there was over 270,000 votes for that one. Loving it. We know that this one's going to be made into a movie and that Steven Spielberg is on board to direct. So this is going to be on everyone's radar really soon. So get in there and read it quickly. Uh, I read it about three years ago. It took me two days the first time. And then recently I listened to it on audiobook and it's Will Wheaton that narrates it. So I think he's pretty good at it. I recommend it. So the book, the concept, it follows Wade, who's this poor kid who does really well in the Oasis, which is in futuristic times, basically a VR headset. Uh, so you put it on and then you enter this virtual reality world. Uh, everyone's on the Oasis, that's what anyone does. Now the creator of the Oasis is a multi-billionaire. He passes away and there is a competition to win his inheritance. To do this, you have to uh, complete a series of challenges. What's great about this one is that it nails nostalgia so any kind of geek show music toys anything video games they will all get a huge mention especially if it was from the 80s or the 90s so it kind of panders to that love of nostalgia I ate it up I absolutely loved it uh, if you have read it tell me what you loved about it down below we actually had Ernie Klein on a book club not so long ago Michelle Boyd joined me on that one to talk with Ernie no, not only about Ready Player One but his latest book Armada I did read that one as well but I prefer Ready Player One the next book that I want to talk about let's go into high fantasy it's the Night Angel trilogy and the story is called The Way of the Shadows it's by Brent Weeks and it scored 4.2 on Goodreads with 94,000 plus votes for that. Uh, again, we had him on the live stream and chatting with Brent Weeks was amazing. He put up with us for over an hour, which was very, very kind of him. And we talked about the first of the trilogy. Uh, big shout out to Steph Bendixson or Hex as some may know her. She got me onto this series actually and I'm so glad she did. It follows a guy called Azoth who turns into Kyla Stern and it follows his life from a guild rat to a wet boy and a wet boy is basically an assassin on speed they've got magical capabilities the quote there that Kyla says is that wet boys are to assassins like a tiger is to a kitten I love that quote it kind of explains it all so the trilogy you've got the way of the shadows the shadows edge and beyond the shadows uh, it follows kind of two stories mainly about Azoth who becomes the wet boy um, and then kind of his rise through the ranks he becomes an apprentice to a one uh, like the probably the best killer in the lands and it kind of shows his evolution and how he changes from a pathetic nobody to someone who's really powerful and then that of a noble boy called Logan Gaia. Now I read these books about four years ago. I bought all three of them. I smashed them out one after the other but because of that it's not fresh in my mind. All I know is that I absolutely loved it and if you want to know more about it or have read it you should definitely check out the live stream that we did with Brent Weeks. The next book it should be number one on everyone's list. It's by Patrick Rothfuss. It's the King Killer Chronicles and there's two books so far in it. The Name of the Wind and Wise Man's Fear. Now this one got 4.6 out of 5 and there were over 330,000 votes for that one. This is my absolute favourite book. I had a friend back home put me onto it and I ended up buying it for my brother and other friends. It's a must read. It follows Quoth, uh, who is a boy and he was in a family of a troupe, you know, the travelling musicians and like, performers. But his family was tragically killed by like a fairy tale myth. So these creatures that everyone was singing about but no one believed were actually real. There's so much attention to detail in him both being a performer because he did start in a, the, the traveling group so he can play and he plays very, very well. Then he can also act. So his performance skills are what kind of gets him surviving through the streets and uh, becoming so much more than he, a, a normal little boy should. Um, he's a very, very smart kid as well. And then you see his journey to becoming a man. And when he does become a man, uh, and that kind of seems a lot younger than most people, at about 15 or 16, um, he goes to university. And unlike other series where it delves into the study, uh, it takes a really different take on this and it's thoroughly enjoyable. He uses uh, a type of magic that has a science behind it and like physics behind it and you almost think that it's real but it's completely fabricated so that was very well, well done as well. I first read that book uh, about three years ago and then recently heard it again on audiobook. Uh, initially I didn't like the narrator on that but then he really grew on me. He's got some great character voices in there so 
Uh, I should have given him the benefit of the doubt and I didn't, and so I take it back. We had Patrick Rothfuss on Book Club as well. He spoke for nearly two hours with us. We have the whole version there, and we also have a, a smaller version of the best bits. You can look at that in the Book Club playlist on Geek Bomb. Another author that we've had on Book Club, another book that's fantastic, is The Lies of Locke Lamora. It's got 4.3 on Goodreads with over 100,000 votes for that one. Basically, it follows this character who is a professional thief. Uh, and he's in kind of like a guild where they're taught to uh, take on different identities and to pickpocket and to steal and to deceive people. So uh, Locke Lamora was bought by a priest um, and this priest was under the guise of a charity thinking that they were religious uh, but instead it was like a training school to get thieves and to kind of uh, be the best at it in the lands. Lock Lamora is very, very good at bullshitting. He gets very good at these jobs and the jobs get bigger and bigger and bigger. So there's months leading up to just rot over one person and take like all of their, their earnings and all of their riches. Um, so far, there are three books out and there's four more to come with that one. One in just a few months, so that's pretty cool. But I wanna know your book recommendations. <laughs> wanted to go to another world, just step through a window in thin air? Read this. This is all about that. It's so, so good. It's by Philip Pullman. It's part of a series called His Dark Materials. This is the middle one. It gets the least amount of credit, but it's my absolute favourite fantasy novel of all time. It has to be the Ink Heart series. I know I'm cheating a little bit with saying series by Cornelia Funke. Sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong. What happens when you have the power to bring what you read to life? Be careful what you wish for kind of thing. I really think it's really exciting. Yay! Cushiel's Dart by Jacqueline Carey. As you can see, it is very, very well loved by me. Full of sex, politics, violence, really not something you want to admit to mum you read. So let me know in the comments below, what are you reading? What do you love? Have you read any of the ones? And will you check out all of the streams with those authors that I've mentioned? Because the links are all in the descriptions down below. You can watch all of them. And uh, I want to know what author you would love me to try and contact to do book club with them. Thank you so much. This has been The R in Power. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs> <sighs>